So, f first, a little backstory about this talk. After receiving yet another e marketing email butchering my name uh, during Christmas, I posted this text on Facebook, inspired by a song by the Ting Tings. Let's see if I... I don't know if I have a network, so... That's enough. <laughs> uh, my name is Bor. I also go, go by Bard, Brad, Bored, and so on. Online, my identity is uh, Elzap. I'm a platform engineer at DNB, uh, no, the largest bank in Norway. I am an avid supporter of uh, the free and open source software movement and, <laughs> and have been organizing meetings for Bergen Linux user group for more than 10 years. I have three kids and a wonderful geeky wife. And I am a geek. To me, that means that I like to go deep into things and figure out how they work. I read uh, ready to do that together with me today. Geeks sometimes measure their geek power by showing off their understanding on how systems work, kind of like I'm going to do with you today. One common way to do this uh, 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 is to show that you can write something in binary. I have not memorized my how to encode my name in ASCII. Mostly because it cannot be done. ASCII does not have OR. As a kid, I did actually try to f uh, find out how to uh, uh, my name was encoded in binary. This exposed me to the weird world of character encoding. There's not one way to encode characters. There's an infinite number of ways to encode characters. Some make sense, some maybe not so much. Most modern uh, character encodings use as US ASCII as a base and builds onto it. Which is why you all, uh, the problems usually just, uh, uh, usually occur when you go outside the US ASCII space. When talking about encoding, we don't usually use the binary codes, we usually use the hex codes, which is easily converted to and from binary and is easier to relate to and takes up less, less space. But for the explanation's sake, both kind of matters in this talk. Now let's go into it. What is character encoding? Simply put, characters, uh, character encodings are mappings between numbers and characters. We, as humans, like to work with text, graphics, and sound, while for the computer, this is all sequences of numbers. But we encoded t text long before we had computers, though. Think of Morse language as a text encoding. It's even in binary. ASCII also predates computers. Even numbers need to be represented as character code points. Back in the days, operating system vendors came up with their own uh, encodings for various regions. And this was mostly OK, because computers rarely process documents from other regions or even from other operating systems. Microsoft dom dominated the market. And uh, if you're using a different operating system, it was mostly up to you, uh, onto you to find the right encoding uh, so you could communicate with others. Furthermore, no one really expected it to be, simp be easy. Then the World Wide Web com com came around and we all started connecting to the internet. Suddenly, it suddenly became very common to communicate over large distances. Unless instructed otherwise, browsers still expected all documents you encountered 
to have the same encoding as you were using locally. Even though Unicode was invented roughly at the same time as the World Wide Web, and UTF-8 came around in uh, 1993, we st started using HTML entities to make sure that uh, text was correctly displayed. In 2003, we are still using HTML entities, 10 years after UTF-8, to make sure that the Scandinavian characters were correctly represented. HTML entities is yet another uh, layer of encoding on top of ASCII. Imagine how many times I've received emails greeting me like this. <laughs> it is disappointing when my name cannot be shown correctly. I mostly find it entertaining, but there is no doubt that other people are more seriously affected. Names are no laughing matter. Today, Unicode has won. And we have an uh, agreed upon way of referencing every character under the sun, and then some. You would think en encoding issues were something of the past. Unicode has its own set of problems, but we still struggle with the sins of our past. UTF-8 were supposed to fix everything, and to a large degree it did but we are a huge amount of data already encoded with the, in, uh, with the old encodings. And a huge amount of computer systems expecting and producing the old encodings. We started a transition, a transition that we might never complete. IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, currently rec uh, recognizes 259 uh, standardized character sets. To this day, Azure DevOps, the Azure DevOps front page greets me like this. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I had a kebab at my favorite kebab place. Notice, notice how they omitted the umlaut over the uh, in Döner, oh, um, and how vår reference, it's Norwegian, is displayed. I have not been able to find out how this, uh, how or became these symbols yet. But I bet it started with a wrong assumption about the in input encoding. I have lost count of the number of e receipts, email, and emails I get greeting me with B, A with a tilde, Y and sign, R, D. This is by far the most common misdecoding in Norway, based on my empirical observations. It's of course the similar uh, errors with Ö uh and A. Uh. This happens as a, a result of interpreting UTF-8 as if it was ISO 8859-1, or ISO Latin 1, or Windows code page 1252. At s we use, used a deployment tool called Octopus. They keep sending me emails like this. <laughs> Any guesses what happened here? This is most likely the result of assuming your UTF encoded uh, input is Macintosh encoded, also called Mac Roman. Macintosh Cyrillic would also produce the same result. And this is the email I got from B sides. <laughs> I'm not sure if this was a joke. Because the first few emails were, were correct, and then the last email was like this. <laughs> Webworks address me like this in emails. I'm not sure how it happened here, or even how to pronounce this. If you know, I would like to know, so please tell me. 
perhaps it's the same error as with the kebab receipt. And then there's this. A local company in Bergen used to send me emails where they wrote my name like this. Is this kind of threat or something? This symbol is called a dagger. I looked into this and concluded that they most, must have stored my name somewhere using code page 850, also called DOS Latin one. And then, <laughs> and then they have interpreted that as if it was Windows code page 1252, which is usually referred to being the same as ISO 8859-1. But in the range from 8.0 to 9F, ISO 8859-1 is undefined. This is to allow for con control characters and other uh, adaptations. This is where we in Windows code page 1252 find the dagger symbol at the sa in the same position. The web Hypertext Application Technology Working Group decided uh, in the HTML5 5 standard that whenever you specify ISO 8859-1 as encoding on a web page, code page 1252 should be used instead. Although this technically makes sense, it adds, adds, uh, it adds more confusion. You get access to way more uh, symbols with code page 1252, and Windows user, users probably already expected all those characters to be there. At AWS reInvent, I talked to some sales representative for Kong and let them scan my badge. They sent me this, this email. And now we're going to see how that happened. I have a fairly good idea of what's going on here. Most likely, it started like with Octopus, interpreting my name given to them in glorious UTF-8 as if it was Mac Roman or Mac Cyrillic, and encoded the result um, as UTF-8. Then they have read that encoded, uh, UTF-8 encoded string as if it was Windows code page 1252. Or, li or less likely Windows code page 1254. Many computer systems are um, configured to take the local uh, vendor uh, specific encoding as input st and storing the data as UTF-8. And if they then read the data again and stores it again, they will encode it once more. For every system your text passes through, there is a new opportunity to ma uh, make an encoding error. In the previous example, um, it uh, has been misinterpreted at, le at least twice. It could have been mis in, uh, misinterpreted more, more times, but accidentally or purposefully repaired. Even text that is correctly represented may have been encoded wrong somewhere along the line. Because sometimes we developers fix problems in one system that was caused by another system. Can you imagine what happens when your original system then gets fixed? Yes. Yet another missing coding. <laughs> Here's another example of interpreting uh, an encoding wrong twice. It's amazing that this shipment actually arrived. <laughs> so let's see. This is the result of uh, first interpreting UTF-8 as ISO 8855-1 or 15, or Windows code page 1252, encoding the result um, as UTF-8, then reading it again as Windows code page 1252. Yeah. 
Um, another uh, interesting uh, thing you can see from these examples is how one character becomes two. This is because while ISO 885-1 uh, and other traditional encodings uh, uses one byte uh, for every character in its character table, UTF-8 makes use of a dynamic, dynamic number of bytes to represent each character, giving them more than enough room for all the no known alphabets in the world, living or dead. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is how they found room for the beloved pile of feces emo emoji and all the other emojis. New emojis are, uh, are introduced all the time. In UTF-8, the Scandinavian characters are represented with two bytes. Or are they? Take the letter O. O is the 197th character in the Unicode character table. In UTF-8, this becomes C385. This is two bytes. But it could also have been encoded as a composition of capital letter A and combining ring above. A is one byte for one, and um, combining ring above is two bytes. CC8A. Together, they make three bytes. It's also, it's also optional in which order these uh, uh, byte, uh, byte comes. So it could also be uh, it, not only 41 CC8A, but also CC8A41. To make uh, matters even worse, Unicode also defines an additional character that looks exactly like the Norwegian character O. If you encounter this, it's most likely uh, you're uh, most likely a phys uh, physicist, or you're dealing with um, uh, text that comes from some kind of optical character recognition system or you're just a geek. Or the angstrom sign is a unit of length named after the Swedish physicist Anders Jonas Angstrom with an or, not an angstrom, and is encoded as E2848488AB. One angstrom is 0 0.1 nanometers, in case you wondered. Encountering this character is, is apparently so rare that many applications will convert an angstrom to an O behind the scenes. This is also the, in line with the current recommendations from the Unicode Foundation. In fact, this also usually happens if you try to use the combining ring above. But not always. Plain text is not simple. It's just unstructured. There's nothing in plain, a plain text file telling you what encoding it is in. You barely have an op uh, optional file extension that tells you uh, that it is plain text. If you receive text from an input field or the clipboard, you don't even have that. Image formats and other formats we deal with usually have a header that tells you what format it is. But with text, we often just have the encoded text in itself. In UTF-16, there was an attempt to creating such a header. UTF-16 had two different modes, Little Andean and Big Andean. This controls uh, the order of multibyte characters. Um, if the first two bytes are FEFF, -F, the text encoding was Little Andean, and if it was FFFE, it's Big Andean. This is called the UTF-16 byte order mark, or BOM for short. This required all software dealing with text to inject the BOM when you cut and uh, remove it when you pa paste. With lots of legacy software, it didn't work so well. 
You might have encoder, countered the bomb if you open a plain text, plain text file in Notepad and the first character is a black square, while the rest of the uh, file looks fine. However, it might also just be a Y with a hat in ISO 8859-14. I have compiled a list of resources uh, on as a GitHub GIST. So if you scan the QR code, you can find that. Um, and uh, otherwise, I'm done with the talk. And uh, if you have questions, yes, or microphone. Great talk. Do you think in 20 years from now, Elon Musk's son will be having the same problem as you do? Because he also has a Norwegian letter named its name. Uh, it's probably already happening. <laughs> <laughs> I, also, I also told Borja before he started his talk that, you know, you need to ask the audience, have anybody else in the audience, uh, <laughs> should I say non-English characters in the name that are causing problems? Yeah, so <laughs> more questions for Bold. Have you, encountered, have you encountered problems with passwords where you use those characters? Uh, not me, but uh, Per told me about a uh, situation uh, where... Uh, yeah, I can do that one, <laughs> the Ukraine. It, you, it, it's, no, no, not that one. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> But where it's uh, it's about these uh, uh, combining characters, uh, where uh, on iOS devices they are combined to one character, while on uh, PCs they are uh, separate symbols. And uh, someone created a password for their bank idea, bank ID in Norway. I have not confirmed that this is the case, but it's most likely the case since she were able to log on to her bank ID from her phone, but not from any other device. Yeah. I remember way back in 2007 was my first time visiting uh, Kiev in Ukraine, the capital, uh, visiting colleagues there back then. And out of curiosity, of course, I asked them, uh, have you ever considered doing passwords in using Kyrillic? Uh, characters and they, they just laughed at me and like you have no world you know no idea of what kind of world of pain you're gonna be in if you do that first of all if we travel to the west you don't have you know uh, a keyboard layout with with Kirill characters on it but the second one is like and I'm sorry for saying this but most of you people in the west you have no idea there exists more letters in the world than A to C anyway so it, they were just like that is the most stupid thing you can do and I've talked to people from all over the world and still ask this question, have you ever tried to do this in Greek, uh, in Arabic, in Chinese, in Japanese? And usually the answer is no, I wouldn't dare try doing that at all because it's just going to make a lot of problems for me. Uh, perhaps a more uh, security related question, but did you ever encounter any potential attack scenarios. I can imagine if your name gets converted to something with an ampersand that could be seen as an extra parameter somewhere or uh, for example maybe a normalization attack in an email address that could, I don't know, lead to another user being updated, stuff like that, maybe accidentally. Uh, did you ever see any of that uh, as a life uh, experience guy? Well, this example with uh, uh, This, imagine this being appended to, to a URL. So yeah, uh, that can happen. And there is also these cases where, uh, oh wow, there's a lot of echo, where uh, you have, uh, uh, there's more symbols that look look the same in, the Uni in Unicode, uh, like the Youngstrom sign and the O. Uh, so you can register a domain using, uh, uh, a different uh, character set, and uh, and uh, in that way, make it looks look like it's the same domain as your as your bank, for instance. So A is famous because you have a symbol, uh, a Cyrillic symbol that looks exactly the same. 
or or in in many fonts it's actually quite uh, a little bit different different but it's similar enough that people don't react to it yeah more questions yep in the back and and we are already into lunch time so those who wants lunch uh, leave and those who wants to discuss this more stay to say thank for the presentation Veldik Bra uh, Bard I'm um, sorry calling Bard <laughs> Bar um, wondering about this why do you think even Norwegian companies Norwegian bank statements Norwegian Saugskvittering uh, was showing your name why do you believe this is, is still happening inside norway not really only related to international communication where, where uh, character conversion could be explainable but why why are we still still facing that thanks so as, as i uh, touched on to uh, there is nothing in indicating what in, uh, encoding a text is in so this is all with all of this is with text uh, it, with character sets that already accept the Norwegian character. And, uh, but you don't, just don't know which, uh, which encoding it is when it, when it comes all over the wire. Um, and most of these issues is exactly when a system tries to fix uh, the encoding. They get something in as, as uh, UTF-8 and they assume it's, it's the old encoding and they try to fix it by making it UTF-8 and then you get another uh, misencoding. More questions for Bob? Not a question, but I noticed the, the characters on your header on the slide change from side to side nice touch <laughs> yeah okay then uh, no more questions for Borg we'll cut off for lunch thank you both for coming and doing your talk